Lip Sang Sushon in an Airfix mug. Oh. It's just the right temperature for glogging. <laughs> Sunday afternoon in the cave. Sun is shining. What could be better? Models on the bench. What was it I said? What was the reason I gave that, uh, that I didn't enter into group builds? Because I was always worried about not getting things finished on time. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case here. I haven't finished them, not by any uh, stretch of their imagination. But progress is progressing at a very progressive rate, shall we say. Here's the wee trainer for Aaron Newland's trainer group build. The little Hummel Cybel S202 SI 202C Hummel. And remember, I said this was a short run kit? It's very short. <laughs> Basically, I mean, here's the carass, or the, the carrot. If there's anybody out there who knows their Polish aircraft, am I saying that right? How? Where's the emphasis? Is it carass or carass? Anyway, progress is pretty much neck and neck here. And obviously there's a lot more parts in this one than there is in this one. The problem is the parts in this one just don't seem to want to fit to any other part. Um, <laughs> it, it, there's a lot of work involved in this little kit. If you're, if I mean, it looks cute and you know, nice and petite and tiny, and you might think, oh, it's a nice little easy build, nice relaxing, stress-free build from what I'm whatever you're working on at the moment. It ain't. This is no Tamiya. Uh, the work going into this for what I'm going to get out of it is probably a bit of an imbalance, but you know, I, you know, I'm enjoying it. As I say, this is not a complaint. This is teaching me a lot, um, but it does need <laughs> it does need some fiddling, shall we say? Uh, just getting the mating surfaces to, you know, one mating surface. Although the, the two parts are coming together like this, one mating surface would be like that, and the other one would be like this. So you kind of got to bring them together. Uh, so, uh, anyway. um, so it's basically basically been just sticking, filling, sanding. Um, to the extent that I think a lot of the, sh the I, don't, I don't know if they had sort of hardish edges, but they've kind of gotten softened a wee bit. And I had to rescribe, just, just the only panel lines that are really noticeable are at the front. But, uh, and as far as in interior detail is concerned, I found a, a, an image of one of these things online with the canopy open. It's one of those canopies that sort of opens out on a hinge. And it's pretty much... Uh, fairly well represented with this thing, a single sort of bench seat, two sets of harnesses, two sticks and a very very basic little instrument panel. Um, and I think I'll probably show the canopy closed. They're, they're vac form canopies that come with it and uh, god that doesn't look like it's going to fit either. <laughs> but um, now that I compare, so, I mean, that goes, oh it might, yeah. Um, but you get two, so I might, I might have a go at having it open, um, but what I'm going to have to cut is going to make the, the rest of the canopy quite weak and the part because it's just flimsy plastic. We'll wait and see, there's two on there so I'll, I'll, I'll maybe try that first and if it doesn't look like it's going to work I've always got this one to fall back on. For the ISM group build, the 100 years of bombers, the carass is progressing as I say at a fairly progressive rate. Wings are on, the wheel spats are on, um, but Whilst this is no short round kit, again, it doesn't quite aspire to the to the uh, the wondrous heights of the, the the Japanese and some of the other Eastern European manufacturers. It's beautifully detailed. There's some lovely surface detail on this thing, uh, and that's the problem. Um, because if it doesn't fit too well, and you have to fill and sand, you risk losing a lot of that detail. I've already lost a couple of these little things. I don't know what they are on the just just behind the engine. These little raised areas here, uh, where I had to fill the seam, and my sanding's been a little bit, you know, exuberant, and I've kind of softened them. They, they can easily be replaced with a little bit of strip styrene because they're just small rectangles on the surface. I have no idea what they are. Probably some kind of vent or something. Uh, but the main concern on this one was with the wings. The way Mirage have designed it is that there's the, these sections here are separate from these sections. So you actually have two joins to contend with. There's the actual fuselage wing route 
uh, join here and then there's the wing to wing join but as it so happens there's these uh, photo etched pieces top and well, top side and underside that I don't know what they are they're like strengthening pieces or something they're moulded into the plastic and it's an optional extra optional option if you want to use the photo etch which obviously yes we do but they're wide enough that they just sit over that joint so I don't actually have to worry about filling it they actually cover it up but the detail on the wing here at the actual wing roots especially on this side which is like a, a little textured walkway had that been lost to sanding it would, it would have been impossible to replace uh, and again there's some lovely uh, detailing on this side as well so what I've done and it's a method that I'm employing quite a lot now for the main seams uh, I use super glue uh, in fact I use this super glue zap a gap can you see that? zap a gap come on camera come on focus 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 and we've got zap a gap uh, which will fill gaps of up to two mil I used to claim that it used to fill gaps up to two mil Jesus oh. Anybody got a microscope? I can't. I'm sure it used to say that. But... No, anyway, it's very good for filling seams um, <clears throat> because it sands and can be polished like glass. It, because it's when it dries, it dries rock solid. Um, it's very, very good for that purpose. But beware um, if you're using on seam lines and you have like a a ridge of this stuff going along because it dries very very hard and very very solid it sands at a different rate to the plastic so whilst you're rubbing away at this stuff the plastic around the outside uh, or around the perimeter could be sanding away um, faster so you have to just keep your eye on it using um, these these this is what the ultimate uh, one of the ultimate product sanders um, I don't know what but this one is, Lee will probably tell me, Lee and Paul but this one's actually quite firm some of the other ones are quite spongy in which case when you're sanding over a thing the sander will conform to that um, and whilst the most pressure will be on the ridge you're, you'll still be sanding around the outside so you have to be very careful these ones, this the darker grey ones which are harder you, you've got a wee bit more control if, if you employ that method, the super glue method um, as I say, it's just, if, the, if the gap's quite sizable, because it polishes and sands and can be polished uh, very, very smooth, you, you don't get that change in texture that you, you can often get with the sort of the grittier putties. But, uh, and I'd like to actually show you this, this method today, something that I've been employing on both this little thing, in fact I've been using this method for quite some time, and that is this wondrous elixir of modelling. Uh, it's the Gun Sangyo um, from their Mr. Hobby range and it's um, I like <laughs> everything's Mr. This is Mr. Dissolve Putty. How do you do Mr. Dissolve Putty? My subscribers, my subscribers, Mr. Dissolve Putty. Um, it's kind of like their, their Mr. Surfacer. <laughs> um, Mr. I, I use Mr. Surfacer 500. I also have their Surfacer 1200. Uh, for, as, per, as far as primers go, this stuff is just Wonderful. I have Tamiya's as well, their surface primer, and I have the stuff that you know, the, the, the stuff you get out of Halfords, we call it, it's a, a, an auto store, big chain. So I've got their primer as well, but this stuff just, oh, it, 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 I highly recommend it. So, and it, 1200's a wee bit finer, 500's a little bit thicker, but Mr. Putney is even thicker still. Now the thing is you apply it with a brush, well I, I apply it with a brush, you can use this if it's just a single wee hole or something, you use a cocktail stick or something and just drag it along, but it, it's it, it's like it knows what you want it to do, um, you, you, you offer it up to the, to the gap, touch it in it, capillary reaction, which is the modeler's best friend, takes the stuff into the crack, you may have to do one or two um, runs as it were, uh, because again, like like a, same with the super glue. If you've got a gap, the first one will maybe dry into this one, the second one, and maybe a third one just fills it out. But the advantage of this stuff, because it's liquid, um, it's soluble, which means, come and have a look. Right, 
So, because, excuse me a wee second. I don't want it to get cold. Uh, because it's soluble, if you use, I think it has to be their own thinner. I use, I keep a little jar of the stuff, Mr. Colour Thinner. Because it's soluble, if you take cotton bud, or Q-tip as you call them in the United States, and probably everywhere else. For example, here, here we go, here's the little Hummel. I, I did this earlier, I, was, I actually still need to put a second coat, or a second um, application of this stuff. I don't know if you can maybe see there. Uh, where I've applied the filler, just a lot in the, the wing roots and this is this would be quite a nice example, you can maybe see that there is some little surface detail which would have been lost completely had I used this, uh, the sanding method so, well I'll show you how I apply it first because I need to do the top wing roots first as well I should say, not first because I've obviously done the underside first so take a brush Okay, and just, in fact you don't even have to be neat with it to be honest with you. There, you could probably see that in positioning this wing, it's created a, le a little gap. These wings had no locating tabs. It was a flat surface on the wing and a flat surface on the fuselage. So it was just simply glued on like a slab. But you could probably see that little gap in there. So all I do, is just take the stuff and just paint it into the crack. Like I say, you don't have to be too neat. And I'll show you the why. You may need to go a few times, just this this this, this one will line the the crack. Gap, shall we say. And you can clean your brushes afterwards. I use cellulose thinner. I mean, obviously you could clean it in Mr. Hobby's stuff, but that stuff's rather expensive, so I don't use it for that for that purpose. But it will kind of settle itself down into a nice. You, you cannot sometimes get away with just a light sanding if 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 there's no detail to worry about. But you see how smooth that goes on. It's you know. Other than the overspill, it's it's almost good to go like that. So anyway, that's the top side done. I did the the underside a little earlier. Just clean my brush. And so I use cellulose thinners, which smells wonderful, but it will clean just about anything off of anything. Don't dip your brush in too far, because uh, it'll strip the paint off the brush, off the the wooden part, you know, your handle. So anyway. But on the underside, you can see there, we've got, I, I will have to do these again, uh, I did them about half an hour ago, um, and I do need to just run some more Mr. Putty in there, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I will show you what I mean. Because it's soluble, using Mr. Color Thinner, <laughs> I don't know if he's a relative or not, dip a cotton bud in it, just take off the excess and just running along the edge, or, or, or over it I should say, just keep doing that and eventually it will start to melt, or dissolve I should say, the Mr. Dissolved Putty. Don't apply too much pressure because if you do, the cotton bud will deform and push its way into the, the crack, the gap, and it will undo everything that you've just just done. Um, as I say, this one's going to need some more uh, putty in the, the, the join, but what's happening here is it's just removing all the excess and because I'm not putting too much pressure it's leaving the filler in the join. And just wipe away the excess and we're left with two very, very, very fine. As I say, there's the, the, these will need treated again because there's a small air bubble, that must have, or just a small gap there. But it's perfectly smooth there now. No sanding, no loss of detail. 
no trouble, no fuss, no mess. Now the thing is on the carass, or carass, as I'm sure you're going to point out, you can see there I've, where it was essential because of the kind of detail that was in the, on the plastic. It's filled that crack just perfectly. Same there. I've put some around the bottom of the wheel spats. Here, for example, uh, you can see where it's... I'm, I might need to sand that um, because I will need both surfaces to be the same. Um, which might be a little awkward here because I've got a raised area here and a raised area here. Uh, as you can see here, the fit. Uh, this was this middle, no, the, the, the sort of the centre section. It's meant to be level with these parts, um, but in order to keep the the wing root at the same level, the wing and the wing root join to be nice and smooth. It's kind of pushed this lot up, so th these are slightly raised where they should actually be flush, and there's quite quite a gap there as you can see. Um, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. Maybe put a fillet of uh, plastic card in there and try and maybe level it out with some. I, I don't know. We'll figure that one out. Um, fortunately, it's on the underside. You can see here on the, the horizontal stabilizers where they have this lovely ribbing effect, and there's a rib right up at the seam. So, using the dissolved putty and then wiping away the excess. Fills the gap, fills the join, without worrying about losing any of this detail. So, and again, there, there we are on the top. Not a piece of sanding paper or sanding stick near it. But the joins are all nice and neatly filled. Lovely and smooth. Perfect.